I got really good news. We're going to talk about faith again. All right. We're in Matthew chapter 9, and we are starting in verse 26, and we're going to read to 31. Another story where faith is important. I'm going to read one of the verses from last week. It says, this news spread throughout all the land, the news of the guy's daughter being raised and the lady's uh, hemorrhage being healed. It says, and this news spread throughout all that land. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came up to him and said, Blind men came up to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done to you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him throughout the land. There's a lot of stuff in this story that's awesome. I want to really highlight a couple of things. One is... uh, Two blind men cried out to him, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. I want the Son of David's mercy in my life. And I think, I've been told many times, that it's mine. But there are many areas of my life where I'm still blind. Maybe you think, maybe you understand that and say, There's many areas in my life where I don't see clearly. Maybe you need the son of David's mercy in your life too. And these two guys are a great example. They say, son of David, have mercy on us. They're blind. It's just like a very difficult position to be in to be blind. And I think that my kind of blindness is a very difficult position to be in. And I have so many friends that, though they once saw, they are now blind. And we're blind. I have other friends who were so blind, and now they see so clearly. And some see clearly, and then lose some of their eyesight, some of their mind sight, some of their understanding. But here's just physical blindness in this story. I'm really one relating it to spiritual blindness, ignorance, stubbornness. Or just plain don't understand. But they were blind. And they cried out, Son of David, have mercy on us. And then he says something interesting when he went to the house. That means he just went right on by to the house. There's no answer. There's no, follow me, come with me, let's get away from here. Let me take you by the hand, blind men. He just went to the house. Now, how are they going to find the house? They're blind. Probably, probably had help. But at the house, they found him again. First, they found him and shouted, have mercy on us. Why'd they do that? Were they doing that all day long, everywhere, all the time? Well, they did identify they knew who he was, son of man. Son of David, I mean. They knew. He's the promised one. He's the one that's a coming. He's the one that he is coming, has arrived. And they do whatever it takes. I don't know how hard it is for a blind man in, you know, early Jerusalem to find the son of David. But they found him. He walked right on by. I'll have a, I'll have, I'll have a bet on this one. If this group here, you and me, cried out to Jesus and he walked right on by, I bet you that more than 50% of us wouldn't go find the house he went to, especially if the hardship of being blind. I mean, if we had the hardship, if we just were hungry, well, eat lunch or go find Jesus. I'll bet you that'd be difficult for us, a bunch of us. And I'll bet you the number would increase by how hard the circumstances are in our life. If today just happens to be a particularly hard day, something particularly difficult is happening. Maybe we wouldn't go on to the next place and find him again and say, they didn't say anything. It just says, and they came up to him. 
They found him in the house and they approached him a second time. They're blind. This wasn't that easy. One way or the other, that wasn't that easy. But they weren't done. They still weren't healed. He asked them a question. And I know you think it's an easy answer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if all of us believe. He says, do you believe that I can do this? Some of you forget sometimes he had two hands, two arms, two legs, looked just like a man. Isaiah said when he came, he wouldn't look like the kind of man you'd be drawn to. He wasn't beautiful. He was not comely. That he would draw your attention is what Isaiah said. He just wasn't that good looking. We already know he wasn't rich. He did not have a position of political power. They found him. They went up to him and he asked them, do you believe that I can do this for you? What are you facing today? What are you facing in your life? And who gets to determine what's too much for you to believe? Every day of my life, for a while there, someone would approach me with something like this. Lately, it's way less, but I'm not in that position anymore as much. But when I am discipling people on a day-to-day basis, they always come to the point where their faith is beyond its test. The county wrote me a letter, and if I don't do this, I'm going to jail. Well, doing this will take you away from Jesus. Don't you trust Jesus? About half of them end up trusting Jesus. A bunch of them are in the room today. They went with the way of trusting Jesus, and they didn't go to jail. Do you believe he can do the, handle this letter? If, if I don't go out and get a job, they're going to... Really, they're going to? Are they in control of your life? Do you believe he can handle even this letter? My one guy, one guy said, My dad told me Steve Orsillo's a crook. I said, Okay, do you have any evidence that Steve Orsillo's a crook? I did a third party conversation, like like I wasn't me. I talked about me like I wasn't there. You follow me? Do you have some evidence where Steve Orsillo had stole from you, <laughs> betrayed you, stole from anybody you know? No. Do you believe that Jesus can use Steve Orsillo to help you? Do you believe that Jesus can help you where you're at? What do you believe? oftentimes it's somebody in their leadership line is unfair and they think I'm going to rescue them from unfair they find out that I believe unfair is a great teaching tool and I'm not going to rescue them from it (laughs) do you believe that Jesus can help you through unfair do you believe that Jesus can change you to where you can deal with unfair Because let me just tell you about life. My life's great, and I've come across a lot of unfair, unjust. (laughs) Do you believe that he can help you with this? And what do you believe? People who exercise their faith, their faith gets stronger. People who water their mustard seed, their mustard seed grows. People who fertilize and feed their mustard seed tree, their mustard seed tree gets, turns awesome, and they see the results. If you want to know that, hang around the Father's house for the next five years and pay attention to it, and you'll see it constantly. People who stay the course of faith see the growth of faith. People who see the growth of faith see the effect of strong strong faith. Watch it. Watch it. 
Now there's the expectation that faith is the magic wand. If you're old, you remember bewitched. She just fixed everything with her magic. Or she did it without touching it. But or or like Doom of Genie, remember that? Yeah. Fixes everything with magic. And of course that's how God is, right? Fix everything with magic. If your faith is strong, you say abracadabra. And it's all done. That that's because we misunderstand faith, because we've been we've been seduced into believing that if you just rub the lamp the right way, you get three wishes. Good. If you just put your tithes in every week, you get wishes. If you just go to church, your life is all good. But that's because we do not understand faith. I have been through movements of word of faith. I've been through movements of different kinds of uh, beliefs that if you do this, if you say this, if you... I had this one little booklet that had all these prayers that you pray, uh, stating all the promises of God. And, And I think that's all really good. But I don't have any faith in those Words, I have faith in him. And so, as I've watched these different movements, I kind of mentioned this last week, I've seen that some of them violate a few things. Like they teach the listener that if you are a person who is faithful and full of faith, nothing bad ever happens to you. And I will tell you, I'll tell you a couple things. One from the Old Covenant is that God says to Satan, consider my servant Job, Perfect in my sight. Now read the story of the afflictions of Job. Perfect in God's sight. And I would put you to the New Testament with Paul the Apostle, Peter the Apostle, Silas, Barnabas. And then the history books with all of the other apostles and what happened to them. They all suffered things like beatings and jail unjustly. They all healed people with a touch of their hand and a word from their mouth. Peter even said it most powerfully, such as I have, I give you. Basically saying, do you believe that Jesus' power lives in me and I'm going to give you what you need, not silver and gold? Jesus says to these two blind men, do you believe that I can do this for you? And I think most of us don't. I think most of us took a Y in the road somewhere to think of the magic wand or the abracadabra or the genie's lamp. That kind of magic. Jesus is magic. Instead of faith is a mustard seed that grows into a mighty tree that has its power and has its effect through the life and times of Jesus Christ, through the faith in his power, through the Holy Spirit. And that faith is for the purpose of enduring, overcoming, living our lives in strength. And I will tell you that I have, I will confess to you today that I am struggling greatly this year. I I did not know I was struggling until Donnie Moore two weeks ago spoke here. I did not know I was struggling. When he said it, the bubble burst. I understood oh, I am struggling. I am disappointed in some of the things that have happened in my life because I had wrong thinking that my faithfulness would keep me from seeing this kind of trouble. And I have to go through and repent, and I have to go through and restate my belief. Come hell or high water, you're good. You're my Lord, regardless of what happens. I'm not going to tell you the details of my life. Some of you know them. I've had a particularly run of bad luck if you're a worldly person. <laughs> or if you believe in testing, if you, a series of unfortunate events. That's the way, yeah. And I have appeared on the outside to be very strong through that. And my words publicly have been very strong through that. But my feelings inside have been very, very disappointed. And when, so that's why you don't know it, and even I don't know it. I just have feelings. <laughs> my faith did not protect me from fire. My faith did not protect me from disease or my covering from disease. Did not protect me from failure in my business. Did not protect me from, 
things, and it did not cause my dreams to come true. And um, I realized he, I don't even know that he was talking about what I'm going through, but he just said the words, you get disappointed. People get disappointed because they get an undue expectation of God. These two men did not have an undue expectation of Jesus when they cried out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Nor when they went on from there, from his... Now, I can't say he rejected them. I just know that the words of the book don't tell me anything but that he went on to the house. Man, if I was standing there with a fire threatening my house and I said, Jesus, help me, and he just walked off, I'd be kind of disappointed. I'd be kind of like... Either feeling worthless, like what? You don't like me? Or he's not that good. We ran to the hospital for our granddaughter. No way. This don't happen on my watch. But when it does, and if he walked up and said, I said, can you heal this little baby? And he walked off. I'd be kind of disappointed. But these two men weren't. They, They doggedly went after him. I can tell you my daughter and son-in-law, my wife, me, we went after him. I mean, it's my nature to walk away and say, well, he don't like me. Something about my face just ticks him off. But we didn't. We went after him. And go, stand outside, you'll see this little girl with really short hair come out. He is faithful. It wasn't miraculous, and it was hell for them. But I promise you, at the five-year mark, for their marriage, for their family, for their daughters, the richness in their daughters for what their daughters went through, the richness in my kids for what we went through back. I'm, I'm disappointed there too. I forgot that one back 34 years ago. I had disappointments, but I look at the richness that came to my family because of those disappointments. He did not do what I asked him to do, but he, but he is faithful, and we have had a miracle life, and we have had gifts beyond belief. But these guys, they went forward. They approached him again, and he asked them the question. I thought, hey, man, they went the extra mile. These are two blind guys. They followed you to the house. They got more testing coming? And that brings us to the phrase in Job. I brought up Job. I'll tell you my favorite, my favorite verse in this time, this season. What Job said, did I never hear him getting credit for? But I give him credit for. He said, when I have been tested... And he was saying this to four friends who were telling him, you're definitely a loser because all this stuff doesn't happen to people who are good. You're definitely a sinner, Job. And this is what he said to them. No, I am not a sinner and there is nothing wrong with God. You watch. When I have been tested, I will show forth as gold. And that's what Job said. And I've tried to stand on that. Because I want my faith strengthened. I want to water my faith. I want to feed my faith. I want to live under the tree of my faith. Because that's what Jesus did with these two guys. He, he tested them. They, they, they went and found him. They got in front of his path, cried out to him. He walked by him. They continued, went to the house, got into the house somehow, and approached him. I wish I knew the whole story, but I know that much. And he's still testing them. Do you believe? Do you believe? Why are you moping around? Do you believe or not? Why are you suffering so? Don't you believe? Don't you know? Why are you hurting so deep? Don't you know? Why aren't you seeking healing? Don't you know? How come our altars aren't always buried? Don't you know? Don't you believe he can do what you need? If I were to say anybody in the room not need anything, when you raise your hand, I'd probably say, we need inner healing for the lying spirit. Everybody has needs. Everybody needs to cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Everybody needs to pass on to the house and approach him again. Everybody needs to have a daily approaching of him. And if you are lucky enough, lucky enough, blessed enough, worthy enough, I don't know what the word should be, but if you are just showered upon with God's blessing to be asked this question, do you believe I can do this for you? Oh my gosh. 
You grabbed the gold ring. You've won the grand prize. Yes, I believe you can do. That's why I chased you down the road. I wasn't trying to get you to prove yourself to me. I was just trying to put myself in front of your mercies and get run over by them. I wonder, see the guy, the guy that says my daughter died? Jesus didn't approach him. The lady who reached behind and grabbed him, touched his garment, he didn't stop and say, hey, somebody here, I, I, I sense somebody suffering. No, they went and grabbed what they wanted. They went and grabbed what they had to have. I mean, I'm telling you, man, my little girl's laying dead in a bed back home. I'm feeling like I got to have it now. There's not much time. I got to have it now. When I've been suffering 12 years with bleeding in a land where they don't do transfusions, where do you get more blood? Once it all comes out, I'd say you're pretty desperate. I can't imagine living in a world of blindness. I cannot imagine being blind. It would be pretty desperate. I think one of the corresponding thing in these stories, and we're going to have more, is people desperate. The demoniac in Gad that we just talked about a few weeks ago, crying out, son, son of David, have mercy on us. And the demon saying, what are you doing here? We're in trouble because he's here. It's desperation. You know something big is going to happen because you're desperate. You know something big is gonna, needs to happen, so you go get in front of him. Put yourself in front of him. Maybe it's chase him. Maybe it's bow your knee. Maybe it's come to an altar. Maybe it's just confess your sins. But the question is, do you believe? I can do this for you. And these two blind men said... I'm so proud of these guys because this has got to be hard. They probably prayed all their life. Do you believe I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord. Pretty simple. I know people who write prayers, paragraphs, books of prayers. They walk around practicing to say it right, get it all right. I like the simple. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Will you lay down your life for me, Steve? Yes, Lord. Will you live your life for me, Steve? Yes, Lord. Will you give me all that you have? Will you put all that you have into my possession? Will you make all that you have be mine? Even your life? Oh, Lord, you are so lucky that you have me. For I am a man who will stand. I will prove myself. We don't need all that crap. Sorry. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If I were to pray, I'd say, Lord, you do know that I've failed quite a bit. You do know that my faith isn't what it should be. You do know that I haven't always done the right thing. I remember on March 10th, 1975, I was so angry. If you're real, I'll follow you. By March 11th, 1975, I was standing there going, I've got to decide if my word's any good. It sure hasn't been. I'll follow you. I said I would, I will. No, no human could have trusted me with those words. It was a simple prayer. If you're real, I'll follow you. He was real, so I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And their blindness was healed. I wish we could see the blind healed. My reason for wanting to see the blind healed, I'm just going to let you know, I would really like them to be able to see. He doesn't have to prove himself to me. I just want them to be able to be healed. I really do. I want to build churches in India where they're going to preach the gospel and it's an evidence that American Christians are willing to do good things for them. Because we believe that the message preached in that building will heal blindness. Spiritual blindness, mental blindness, physical blindness. 
Psychological blindness? Faith blindness? $500, we can build a building that has the potential to reach thousands? Whoa, yeah. Can I, do I have to say it? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can I buy you with a price, Steve? Can I buy you with my death on the cross, Steve? Can I buy you with that? Will you allow me to purchase you with my blood? Yes, Lord. Can I... Is my word good? I think it's pretty good to you. But to him it's golden. Yeah, I will. One day he asked me, would I lay down baseball? I said, yeah, I will. Give up that dream? I will. Okay. I said, as long as I don't have to pastor a church. Then one day he said, will you pastor? I was sent standing in by Marcosi's Jewelers. Will you pastor a church? <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> then it will be called the Father's House. And it will look like this. It will be for all people. I had this idea of this pastel colored vineyard church that was really beautiful. One day he said, would you go to Southside? I didn't even hesitate. Yeah, Lord, I will. I'll do whatever you want. Once I, once I accepted pastoring, I said, everything else is easy. So, here's what Jesus answered to the yes, Lord. He said, it'll be done for you. It'll be done for you. And I... Said on March 10th, 1975, I said, Yes, Lord, to your real. I'll follow you. And he's been doing it for me for 42 years, coming up on 43. He's been doing it for me. He's actually, on some occasions, made me sound smart. He's made me look strong. He's, made, he's caused me to want to be a better man, he's caused me to want to be a better servant. He's what caused me to want to know him more. Now, so many of these things come from this next part. He says, so they were healed. It says in the, he said these phrases, and I want to I kind of like maybe hit this a little bit. See that no one knows about this. Think about that. See that nobody knows about this. How does, think about how this works. So I'm blind all my life. I've been with my wife all my life. My mom and dad know me all my life. I've been blind. Everybody's adjusted their world. They have to give me rides everywhere. And he heals my blindness in a, in a little service off to the side, a little house over here. Make sure no one knows about this. How do I do that? <laughs> hey, mom, what do you mean blind? I've never been blind. What are you talking about? How do you do that in a land where everything is transferred by word of mouth and, and it moves quickly? How do you do that? You go into the village square. Hey, there's the village blind man. Where's your white cane? White cane? What'd you do with your dog? What dog? I was never blind. What are you talking about? I'm not that man. I mean, what do you do? How do you not? Even if they, but that isn't what happened. It says... <laughs> It says they went out and they spread the word everywhere. And I still, you know, I mean, so point, giving an instruction to see that nobody knows this is an impossible instruction anyway. But, but why? The question is why tell nobody? Don't you want everyone to believe in you? Well, I want to explain that verse because we are teaching the Bible here at the Father's House, not just inspiring you as you have been, but... Why is he always telling them, tell no one? <laughs> he told the Gadarean demoniac, tell everyone. And he told everybody else, tell no one. And I just want to know why. Well, the Gadareans don't mix with the Jewish people, so it was safe to go tell all the Gadareans, get a, get a head start on this message by telling all your countrymen. But 
The rest of them, in the Jewish people, he didn't want to know because they had a problem you, a lot of us have, and I just, that's what I want to touch on, because it's a problem so many of us really have a problem with. They did not know who Jesus was. They had already developed an expectation that when Jesus comes, this is going to be the truth. And I, I'm not going to identify them. Mostly it's overthrow the Romans in their time. But for 3,500 years, it had been something different each time. Here's a Messiah. Oh, he's going to do this. Well, these weren't the things Jesus was going to do. They completely mishandled the revelation of who God is. They had completely misunderstood the revelation of who God is. And I think here in Christian, Christianity today, we have completely misunderstood who God is. And I think if Jesus came today, we would miss him. A great many of us will miss him. When he comes in the cloud, we expect everybody to get him. And I think many will miss him because they have misunderstood who he is. And I think the, the, the command, make sure no one knows this. He's overwhelmed by mercy. That's why he walks by blind men. I can't keep doing this. This whole country will get all confused. It's going to get them killed. They're all going to rise up in arms against Romans and get killed. It's going to get them killed to hear all this, but I just can't leave two blind men or this leper over here or this madman over here. I can't do it. I have the power to heal them. Their faith is healing them. It's almost like I can't stop it. The lady with the, with the flow, the man, it's like... It's like, the lady with the hemorrhage, they took it from him. Most of the time, like the blind men, they just persistently bugged him until he gave it to them. But he's compelled with mercy to do good to us. And if you'll just pursue him, that will happen for you. You'll see mercies in your life. There will be times of testing where your faith will be tested and you will show forth as gold. But for the most part, he was trying to keep the Jewish nation from rising up against the Roman nation because they would be slaughtered. Because that isn't what he came to do. If he came to rescue them from the Romans, he would have rescued them from the Romans. But he came to set their hearts free. He came to spread the the truth of being a child of God from the Jews to all mankind, including the Jews. He came to begin the message of the gospel to establish a new covenant with man. And them telling everybody and rising them all up was not going to accomplish what he came to do. And so he told them, don't tell anyone. And I just want you to know, that's why he always told people, keep this quiet. Because everyone's going to try to make me king, and that's not okay. The fulfilling of the prophecies about the coming of the one were accomplished by Jesus saying that. You understand? But what he did do was when they pursued him, he healed them. When they touched his garment with faith, faith, virtue went from him and healed them. When they approached him and said, this is what you will do. If you touch, this is what will happen. It happened. Faith, in each case, is what made them well. It's what healed them. It's what they were questioned about. Do you believe I can do this? What, do you, what are the limitations of your belief? And what are the extravagances of your belief? What do you believe? How far will God take you? Are you willing for him to walk by and then chase him? Are you willing for him to ignore your pain and keep pursuing him? Are you willing to have a year that many unfortunate circumstances have, but you're still after him, and you still proclaim him, and you still get in front of him? Are you easily cast aside? Are you easily shoved down? Are you easily caused not to believe? Are you, is it easy to get you to relapse, to go back to your old ways? Is it easy to entice you? Are you easily... What's that word? Tempted. Are you easily tripped or stumbled? Is that easy for you? Then you should cry out to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on us. For we are men of unclean lips, and we need you. And you should do whatever it takes. You should drop your nets and follow him. 
You should get back to where there is strength in numbers and there is, there is faith that is intoxicating. And what's that word when a disease goes from one person to another? It is infectious, where faith is infectious, where contagious, where faith is contagious, where strength is contagious, where truth is taught and learned and believed, where believing what Jesus can do and Jesus won't do is important. Having a correct picture of who God is and whoever God is and you find out who he is, who does that make you? Are you willing to admit you're blind? Are you willing to seek him for healing? Do you, are you willing to proclaim his name if you are healed? I have been healed of many things. First was anger. First was sin. Second was anger. He, he, he forgave me. Third was I was healed of my dreams. He became my dream. Are you ready to be like the man whose daughter died and he went and got Jesus? Are you willing to be like the woman who needed help and went and got Jesus? Are you willing to be like the blind men who got in front of him and when he passed by went and found him? To be all that they could be. To become people who believe for life. To become people who don't have to worry about destroying their life, their home, their marriage, their, their everything. Are you willing to become those people? And begin to have a different world, a different, a different life. If your life is great, are you willing for it to be better? Chase him on to the next house. Approach him. Answer the question. Can you believe this? Are you willing to believe? I'm willing to believe. Mm-hmm.